JPC Letters A Brief Outline, with an expounding on key points, of the work of Jeffrey Hopkins' book Reflections on Reality Dealing with the Life and Work of Lord Song Kappa, and His Essence of Eloquence. Shai Gitz and Dashi Lampa Monasteries, General Laden Lai, the Tibetan DK, and Alice Bailey are also discussed. The Jalugpa sect was probably called the Joyous Way after the monastic, Ganden, university called Joyous, Galgan, established by Tsong Kapa in 1409. Tsong Kapa student named Jendundrup, Panchen or Great Scholar, also built a monastery southwest of Shistgate in 1445 which was named Rashi Lunbo or Mount Luck. The monastic universities or Jalug Palamasaries were open to all classes over a number of centuries and headed by brilliant leaders covering a number of subjects such as cultural, religious, educational, liturgical, medical, and astrological which was freely offered to the people in the attempt to educate along correct lines of the secret doctrines and so counter the Dugpa strongholds. Such discipline and learning was once again brought in line with the great sage Atisha and his great work lamp for the path of enlightenment on which was formed the doctrine of Lamrim or graded path. This is the foundation on which the modern-day ageless wisdom of H. P. Blavatsky and A. A. Bailey, are structured and disseminated. G. Tsong Kappa reforms were primarily concerned with restoring monastic vows and disciplines and achieving an ordered and structured process of study and meditation resulting in clear philosophical reasoning encompassing the wisdom doctrine of a virtuous order in line with the right-hand path and spiritual lineage of the Buddhas of the Good Law. He was concerned with the deviant sexual practices of high tantric yoga to the neglect of the sutras, specifically for the purposes of sex magic and the deviant ritual of the left-hand path. In the G.E. Lakba sect or school of yellow hats, the practical study system is oriented around Tsong Kapa great exposition of the stages of the path which is a commentary, by Tsong Kapa, on the lamp for the path of enlightenment written by the 11th century Indian scholar Atisha who resided in Tibet for the remaining 12 years of his life. Two of Tsong Kapa chief disciples also wrote texts and commentaries on Indian scripture, engaging in the Bodhisattva deeds and these also form a part of the Yellow Hat study system. Tsong Kapa collated researched and sorted through large quantities of Buddhist and Hindu scripture arranging in an accessible and applicable order the practical methods of attainment and treading of the way of enlightenment via the graded path of initiation and of Lam Rim. He presented the differences between the four-class Tantra system and the Great Vehicle Perfection Sutra system, amongst other courses. The schools also taught the study and analysis of comparative religion, of Buddhist and non-Buddhist tenets, primarily for schools of Indian Buddhism which were only sideline courses in the major colleges, and for mostly of the five great books of Buddhist India in Vajrayana Buddhism, the five wisdom kings are also known as the five guardian kings who represent the luminescent wisdom of the Buddha and protect the five wisdom Buddhas. We should recall that he was the reformer of both vulgar, exoteric Buddhism and of the esoteric or occult doctrine. He re-established their dual function and dissemination of philosophical and psychological education within the virtuous order of the Lamas of Tibet. It is said that some modern scholars, lamas stress the point of avoiding the teachings and lectures on Tsong Kapa work in preference of their own school's method of study. They are to be avoided as distractions to the school's curriculum. This would indicate the divergence between the exoteric and esoteric systems. Regarding the abode and identity of the Tibetan master DK we are given to understand he was the senior executive in a large lamasery at Shai Gets written October 1949. According to historical sources on the net the departure of the Panchen Lama for China in 1923 was one of the most confusing incidents of the history of that period. 
In 1911-13 the Tashi Lama and followers angered the Dalai Lama by refusing to assist his forces in expelling the Chinese from Shigets. He was termed the Black and White Magpie. He was spoken of as having Chinese influences. The 13th Dalai Lama thought the Panchen a conspirator and corrupt and having ambivalence about his supreme authority, thus giving him, Tashi Lama, reason to leave Dashi Lumpo in 1923 though he wrote that they were on friendly terms, but extended the thoughts that selfishness was a great evil in the world and it was difficult to believe he could think of himself as a Lama or Buddha. This is probably when the Tibetan master D.K. took over as the senior executive although the Tibetan government did appoint Dzasa Lama Lobzang Tenzing as prime minister at the Lamasari. Further context as to the politics and events of that time are garnered from the history of modern Tibet, 1913-1951 by Melvin C. Goldstein, Jalak Rimpush. General Laden Law and Zaurong Shape together drew up a and agreement to deprive the Dalai Lama of his temporal power leaving him with only his religious power. The Dalai Lama wrote, a special letter. I hear Zasa Depn Laden Law is being appointed the British trade agent at Ye Tung, Vice Mr. MacDonald retiring. I do not know whether this is a fact. Of course, Laden Law is Sikhimese who has faith in the Buddhist religion. He has been here for about a year, organizing the police and it has been found out that he is not altogether a steady and straightforward man and it is not known how he would serve to maintain the Anglo-Tibetan amity. Please therefore arrange, by representing the matter to the Lankan, POS, political officer in Sikkim, to appoint a British officer. Alice Bailey said of General Laden Law, he was a great and good man. General Laden La said, I very frequently meet her when I meditate. I was in the radius of his vibratory sphere of influence, but he was not in mine. We recall that a Lama, the Tibetan, came down to Giants to meet a Mr. H. Carpenter, a good friend of Alice Bailey, as this was as far as Carpenter was allowed to cross the Tibetan border by the Dalai Lama. D.K. had it seems, according to Ab, come the short distance down from Dashi Lumpo Monastery to meet him in Giants. Note the words had come down especially to speak to Mr. Carpenter. Giants is a short distance 94 km, 58.4 miles southeast from Shigets and Dashi Lumpo Monastery, perhaps taking a couple of days on a donkey which D.K. used. He. The Tashi Lama, demanded for his return, of the National Assembly of the Tibetan Government, the restoration of land and property removed from the Tadashi Lumpo Monastery and of freedom of movement and of control of Shigets. It is highly possible that D.K. was the senior executive, if indeed in Tadashi Lumpo, during this period and even that he was a senior executive when the Tashi Lama was in-house. In October 1936 the government of India considers that although the Tashi Lama is under Chinese influence, he is anxious to spend his last years at Shigets, Tashi Lumpo. In 1937 he turned back from Tibet to return to China under their orders. On 1 December 1937 he fell ill and died. JPC. 29. October. 2008.